Hey everybody, I'm going to get right into uh, making a project in CodeBlocks and then uh, one of the really cool things that you can do that, um, which is uh, use the debugger. So we'll talk about the debugger, what it does, and, uh, and kind of the value of it. Um, but let's get into making new projects. There's two ways to go. One, you can click on this little button that says create new project right here in the open window. Or you can just do file new project. So we'll do that. We want to make sure we pick a console application because that is what we're interested in right now. And then the rest of it's going to set up very similarly. I'll just call it tester. Um, it's going to set up very similar to how we've been creating all of our other files. Um, you'll pick a, a folder to create it in, but I'm calling the whole project tester. Okay. So you'll notice when you make it, you'll have some choices. Just leave these all checked and that'll be fine. And then you'll notice that in your little management window, you'll have um, this little kind of colorful icon that says tester, that's your project. And inside of it, you'll have source files, which are um, the main CPP. So later on, we'll get into doing some programs that, that, that have multiple files to them, sort of, you know, um, you know, a lot of programs are a combination of lots of small files. But this one, we're just gonna leave one file there. And you see that it has a little default hello world program in there. And if we run it, hey, look, hello world is just fine. So one of the reasons that I ran it is so that you guys can, can see. Here is the little tester folder over here. And if I open it up, you'll notice that it has a couple of things in it. One, it has this CBP file. So that's this is kind of like the settings uh, for your project. It still has a main CPP file. So this is what you're going to turn in for homework. And then it has these two folders that are things that get, um, when we compile our um, programs, that these get made um, and then things get saved into it um, sort of to organize our project. Because if you imagine if we had a lot of different files, it would fill up pretty quick. So anyways, that's the, the basics of making a project. Now let's go and look at the debugger and uh, some of the really cool things that we can do with it. So I, uh, I took somebody's homework. Uh, sorry if I took yours. Um, this was an earlier version somebody turned in, and there, there's a decent amount of errors in it. So it was one somebody had to fix. So I'm going to show you how you can use the debugger um, to kind of pay attention to some of the values to maybe know where there's something uh, to be uh, something to be fixed. So um, some of you guys might have noticed that if you click along the side here, you get these little stop signs, and those are actually um, do something when you're in a project. These are called breakpoints. So um, right now I'm just going to build it. So I have a, a fresh build. Um, and I am interested in a couple of things. One, I am sort of interested in how beta and gamma might be changing over time because I want to make sure that my, um, you know, my average or something is going to be correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a stop right here, right at beta, and and you'll, you'll kind of see what happens. Actually, I'm going to put a stop right here at the top of the loop, okay, because I'm going to want to be checking to make sure I'm, you know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just see how it works in a second. So I'll put one there at that, and I'll put one here at this calculation here. So now, when uh, you'll notice I have this little red arrow up the top. So when I click this, this is kind of a way to run your program, but you're going to run it in debug mode. And what's going to happen is it's going to go, and it's going to go down right here, um, and it's going to stop, and it's actually going to look like your program froze. So if I run this, you'll see that down here in the debugger menu, I uh, got some messages talking about breakpoints. And right now, our, our window, if you look here, it's just it's hanging, like some of you guys have seen that before. But pay close attention. Right here, we can see um, this little arrow, which is actually saying, hey, right now the program is at this spot. Okay, so that's actually pretty awesome. So if you go into this debugger uh, menu, there's a bunch of windows that you can take a look at. Okay, and you'll see these things, and there's breakpoints, CPU registers, call stack, disassembly, memory dump, running threads, watches. For instance, like disassembly is. Uh, if you have it checked in mixed mode, you can actually see how it's turning it into machine language here. So it sees, oh, here's the while. And then here are things that it's doing with the memory 
um, when it's compiled and running and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of cool if you're uh, interested in, uh, in some of the things you can do with that, and we can talk about that some other time. But what I'm actually very interested in is I'm very interested in how, um, how beta and gamma are changing, because these are something that are going to change all the way through the loop. So I'm going to right-click on beta, and I'm going to put a watch on it. And if you come in here, um, well, it looks like I already had a, had a watch on it on alpha and beta. Um, we'll put it on, on gamma here in a second. Oops. Um, let's undock that for now. Um, so you can see here it actually is keeping track of um, what some of these values are at, at different times. So this is actually set up from an older version. So if I can... Uh, I'm just going to force all these to get updated. Um, actually, let's just, let's just delete all the, the watches. So, um, so now these are the local variables that are in it. Okay, I deleted my watch. I'm going to add a new watch. I'm going to watch beta. So let's watch beta. So now down here, I have a special little highlight that's going to keep track of beta. So now I can go through here, and I want to continue my program. Okay. So if I click on this little red arrow, I will go to the next thing. So I click that, and so now you'll notice, hey, I got to my C in statement. Awesome, I'm stopped right here, and now I can enter in my grade. So I'm gonna enter in a 70, and it looks like it stopped again. So if you notice here, it stopped right here at this beta, alpha plus beta. Okay, cool, let's continue. And what happened, it asked for another uh, another value okay so this is kind of interesting if you notice looking up here you can notice that alpha is actually currently at 70 okay now I'm going to type in this another value so let's do 88 and you'll notice that you saw some updates so then we got down here and we got to beta sitting at 69 alpha is sitting at the 88 that I just put in. So it's actually keeping track of some of these values. Now, this is a little bit weird because it seems like it's updating with a little bit of lag. So I'm going to do something else, which is every time beta gets accessed, I'm going to I want to stop my program. So if I add a data breakpoint for this, I can say anytime it reads the value or writes the value, I want to take take a little pause. Okay? So I come here, let's step through, okay? And so now I just did a write, okay? I am paused right here at the data read, and then I hit a plus, and notice that it stopped this line right below, right breaking right after I did this calculation, okay? Now, an important thing to kind of remember is that if we put this stop sign here, it's stopping right before we get here. Okay, so that's kind of why the breakpoint was it was not keeping track of what alpha or beta was until we got to the top of the loop. It's because we basically stopped it right before we got to this line. So we probably should have put it at 24 instead of 23. But notice here, it just did this calculation. Then it added in a breakpoint because, hey, I just dealt with beta. And actually, I did both things. I did a read and I did a write. And now you'll notice that beta has been updated in our watch list to be 157. Okay. This is really, really useful when you got one of these multi-looped things, right? So then we can just keep stepping through, okay? And hey, let's say I have, well, let's just do negative one. Okay, now we froze. Okay, where did we freeze? Let's take a look here. Da, 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 da. Hey, we froze right down here, and we said, hey, we're doing another calculation with beta and gamma. Awesome. Okay, so let's step through. Okay, and it did a read, so it stepped on that line to pull out the value of beta. It got through that line. Hey, what do we do? Hey, look, we can see that beta is now clearly 78.5. Okay, and then we're going to hit it one more time, and it's going to freeze again right before the average grade is because we're doing a read of beta. Okay. And then we can see um, that it says not available in the current context. 
it's because we've ended the program. We've gotten down to the end, and, and beta doesn't doesn't matter anymore. 